is. As you do, you begin to use your gratitude muscle more often because you become much more aware of those things and ways that you can be grateful. And uh, so I've adapted some of the rest of this, but um, as part of our daily disciplines of serving or striving to walk with the Lord, gratitude lists help enhance self-counsel. In self-counsel, a gratitude list help you focus on what rules your heart in a particular moment or season of time. Challenges of life make it easy to move past contentment to discontentment. Are you discontented? Just be out with it. Right now, you don't have to confess anything here this morning. But are you, are you contented in life? You know what? If we will start a habit of thankfulness, Develop a habit of thankfulness. Being thankful for the good things. Yes, we can all find reasons to complain. Anytime, any place, we can come up with some reasons to complain. And you know what? In the flesh, we're good at it. But the new man wants to be thankful because why? He is worthy of worship. He is worthy of praise, honor, and glory. And thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I got my Thanksgiving tie on. I don't know if you noticed that today. But Thanksgiving is less than two weeks away. Can you believe it? And I trust that you'll have a great time with thanksgiving. But as we think about thanks, uh, it's easy for our contentment to slip into discontent, for worry and anxiety to slip into our lives, for problems to mount and become greater than our God, our, our troubles and our pain and our heartbreak to, to rise up around us. And we push them down. We say, God, you are on the throne. God, I am thankful to you. You are a God of sovereignty and providential protection. It says in Psalm 91.1, and I have, I have two pages of thanks verses here. I'm not going to share them all. Psalm 92.1, It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. 118.1 says, O give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. 107.31 says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Psalm 119, 62, which you're reading Psalm 119 this week for prayer meeting, right? Okay, good. And uh, Psalm 119, 62. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgment. Are you awake at night? Are you awake at night? Give thanks to the Lord when you're awake. Make it a time of worship and gratitude and an outpouring before the Lord. That's just the first page. I've got another whole page of scriptures here that I'm going to try and not look at because I want to move forward here in our text this morning. And uh, I'm not expecting to get through all of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'll just tell you up front. But there's a lot here, and let's dive into it and see what God has for us. Lord, we look at your scripture this morning, and we want to hear from your word. May the Holy Spirit be our teacher and our guide. May we have open hearts. May we have surrendered lives. May we be bowing the knee to you and saying, yes, Lord, yes, your will be done in my life. Not my will, but your will. And may we surrender, be grateful and thankful, and praising you, and recognize the many reasons for which we have to praise you. Humble us before you as we see you in your greatness. That we would again rejoice in God our Savior from the depths of our heart, from the parameters of our mind, through and through, thanking, praising, worshiping, truly grateful to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're called as believers, as we think about uh, thankfulness, I thank my God always. That's from here, I got that phrase from 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 4. Do you see it there? I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. I thank my God always. Can you say that this morning? Are you thankful or are you just thankful on Sunday morning? You're trying to squeak in and, and gender up some thankfulness and, and try and charge the battery to, to make it through the next week. Well, that's, a, that's okay if, if we're just charging up. That's good. We need to get together. It's part of God's plan. But out of that, we need to have a lifestyle of thankfulness. I thank my God always. And that's what Paul says here for the Corinthians. 
as, you, as you've read the book of Corinthians before, you may know that there are many reasons um, that uh, they have a lot of problems. But at the same time, he's grateful. Paul is focusing on gratitude. Notice in verse 1, we're looking at the word called. Would you look for that with me? We're going to find the word called here in these verses. Verse 1, Paul, here it is, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, verse 2, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. And notice also over about being called is also mentioned over in verse 24. Verse 24, to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, down in verse 26, for you see... For you see, your calling, brethren, and then also at the end of the verse, uh, that not many wise according to the flesh may, uh, not many mighty nor many noble are called. The word called here seems to be flowing throughout this, this chapter because God has moved in our lives and has moved us and he has called us to some things. He's, he's done some things and we are called believers we're called as believers to recognize what God has done. And may we go in the wake of Paul's thanksgiving here in verse 4 and be moved to gratitude. Why should we be uh, thankful this morning? You earned what you got. You deserve what you got, right? No, you know what? God has been good to us. Every heartbeat, every breath. And God has done some things in our lives, particularly here. God called believers to an exalted position in Christ. It says here, as uh, written to the church of God in verse 2, uh, verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. We've been called by God, sovereign, controlling power. He has called us to be saved. He called Paul on the road to Damascus, the bright light, and he was born again. And God is calling us to salvation by his sovereignty and reaching out to us to move in us that none of us would be saved without a moving of the grace of God. According to his will, Paul was saved and called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. It was God's will. Sosthenes here, um, one that is mentioned in Acts 18, that is, uh, was there in, the, in um, leadership in Corinth, and, uh, but he was born again. Uh, he was um, beaten but, uh, for what he did with Paul, but um, he's called here a brother. So here's one that was born again, and he's sending the greetings um, in this verse. Verse 2, speaking to the church of God at Corinth, to those who are sanctified. Notice not only are we saved by God's will, but we're saved and called into God's church. God's church. This is his plan. The plan of the, the, the local body of believers that saints would get together in fellowship and that we would serve God and that we would reach our community as we're endeavoring to do. We had an evangelism committee. We've had a couple uh, recently and uh, communicating a lot and texting and a presentation last week. Thank you for those that are serving in evangelism. But we are endeavoring to get the gospel out to make disciples of Christ and see them born again, just like you and I. One time we were unsaved, but we realized we were sinners, and we said, I know Jesus died on the cross for me. I'm a sinner. Lord, would you save me? And we turn from our sin, and we say, Lord, I want to follow you. And it, when we call upon the name of the Lord, we'll be saved, and we become part of the body of Christ. That's what we're doing here today. We're studying the Word together and endeavoring to live that out as, as believers and making disciples to add to this body of believers. So we're saved into God's church, the body of Christ. Are you thanking God for that? We're saved by God from sin. Uh, it says here in verse 2, called to be saints. Uh, though we have been um, before that. To those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. We're sanctified. We're set apart unto him. And now your name's written down. And your home is in heaven. 
We can look forward to that day when we'll be with him. Those that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. We're saved by God unto holiness. Called to be saints, or called saints, literally. We're called saints. Now, it's not because the church has declared us saints or as, uh, you know, uh, after our death, those kind of, that kind of a mentality. But we are considered saints. We are considered holy before God. He has made us holy. And we have now, when we're born again, we've been given the righteousness of Christ, Christians. We have his righteousness. And as God looks at us, we can, we can enter in and we can call him Papa into heaven in prayer. We can enter in if, if, if we could... Um, only see what heaven is like and what's going on there. One day we're going to be there. And we're called saints because we have the righteousness of Christ. And we're to be living that out as well, called to be saints as well in that sense of growing to fulfill that, uh, that sanctification that we do have, uh, not only positionally but practically living that out because one day we'll have final sanctification. We'll be finally perfect. In this life, we still struggle with sin. And so we're in process in growing. But we can thank God that today we have that position of sanctification and we are called saints. Also, we have, secondly, an energizing power. Grace empowers us here in verse 3. Although it's an introduction, we can see some great truths here to thank God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What do we see in this verse? Grace. Grace that empowers us. Do you need power in your life? Do you need God's help with what you're dealing with? Do you face burdens and temptations? Do you have responsibilities that are hard to carry out? Well, you know what? God is there to help us. Do you have ministry that you're doing? Uh, those that are down teaching junior church right now, I hope, you know, we need to pray for them. Lord, help them, right? And uh, that the Holy Spirit would empower and that we would pray for one another as ministry is carried out. Maybe you can't go out on Friday for visitation and go knock on doors or, or minister to people. But you know what? You can pray. And as you have the bulletin, you have a schedule there, pray. Put that on your calendar at home and pray for the things that are going on with the body of Christ here. And God will give us the grace that we need. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God's giving us grace, unmerited favor, undeserved. We don't deserve God's grace, but he is giving us what we don't deserve. He's, he's being good to us. God is, God is being good to you, isn't he? It sure is. We ought to say what? Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for sanctifying me. Thank you for making me a saint. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for adding me to your church. We find in, um, would you flip over with me to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, just a couple pages over. It says, uh, lists a whole bunch of sins in verses 9 and 10, and it says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This is what he has done. We were as bad as anybody we could think of. We're as bad as those people in jail in our heart. Maybe we didn't do all the sins that they did and got caught and got put in jail. You know what? But we are just as bad. We're all just as guilty. We are sinners before God, but as sinners deserving judgment, jail, uh, tickets, whatever it is, whatever we deserve, we deserve ultimately the lake of fire. That's what we really deserve if we get what we have coming. But God has reached out to us and he has changed and moved in our life. And he is moving in a sense to now take us to something different and something better. Turn over to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. A few more pages over. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Paul says this, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, Paul says. Now, was the Apostle Paul a great guy? Wow, right? Wouldn't you like to have him as your mentor? <laughs> right? Uh, but God did a work in his life. 
as knowledgeable as he was sitting at the feet of Gamaliel and as a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Pharisee of the Pharisees, and, and all the great things that, that he could list in his experience, this is what he says. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. He says, what I'm able to do is because God has enabled me. God has been good to me. And I'm giving God the credit and I thank him. At the same time, the verse goes on. Let's read it again. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Wow. So what are you doing with the grace of God that he's giving you? God is gracing you. God has graced you in the past and uh, been so good to us. We say, thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord, when we ask him to be our Savior, that he saves us. We say thank you, Lord. And throughout our life, as he provides for us, we say thank you, Lord. But as God is gracing us, and as he wants us to be serving him, he will enable us. He will empower us. But like Paul says, the grace of God just didn't come to me, and I enjoyed the good things of God. I did something about it. I did the things that God wanted me to do. I stepped out to serve him. I, I did ministry. I went on missionary journeys, we could add to this. I wrote uh, to the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians, that we're looking at. You see, what are we doing with the grace that God's given us? As he's gracing us, and we have a thankful heart, we just don't sit in the spiritual recliner uh, eating junk food, saying, thank you, God, for your goodness, and not doing anything about it. Why did he grace us? He saved you for a reason. He saved us to serve him. He saved us to step out and say, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm raising my hand. I'm going to get in there and do what I can for God. If God, God, I'm dependent on you. I, I, I don't know if I can get through this. I don't know how well it's going to go, but God, I'm dependent on you. And he will enable as you step out, as you're obedient, as a steward to God, as his people. How would God have you for you to take the next step? What's your next step in the Christian life for today or this week? What are you doing for God? Is the grace coming to you? And are you, are you using it? Or is it kind of just all kind of stopped up there? And it's kind of uh, like water would be get, turn, uh, you know, uh, corrupt in the pipe if it's not run for a while, right? We have chlorine today, but you know what I mean, right? And, um, uh, right? Open that valve up and get, get it flowing into your life. And as you use the grace he is giving you, he will give you more for the next opportunity. Step out and trust him. Paul did. And the grace that came upon him, he was energized. And he was grateful for that. Let's look at one more. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 1. Se keep going to your right. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 6, 1. It says, We then, as workers together with him. You see, the grace of God has come into our life, and God is at work to help us to work together as a body of believers. But he wants us to work together with him. You see, God's doing something. This is his church. This is his ministry. It's not all about me and it's not all about you. It's about him. And us doing our part to step up as stewards as we have life and health and strength. You're a day younger today. Be thankful than what you're going to be tomorrow. So use the strength of your youth for him. Step out and do all you can today because later we're not going to be able to do it. Right? God empowers us. Are you thankful that he energizes us? I'm so thankful that he does. What does it say? We then as workers together with him also plead with you, Paul says, not to receive the grace of God in what? In vain. Don't receive it in vain. God's been good to us. We're in the spiritual recliner doing nothing for him. Are we going to stand up and say, time is short. The Lord's coming back. Heaven's uh, real. Heaven is real. I'm here as a representative of Christ. And I'm going to plead with people in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. You need to be looking up. You need to ask Jesus to be your Savior. Come on, look up to him. We're going to make disciples. We're going to be faithful to be an example and say, come on, follow me as I am a follower of Christ. Are you living as an example that you could say that? Follow me? Do what I do? You know, as parents or grandparents, we just can't say, do as I say not as I do. What are they going to follow? They're going to follow the example. And so uh, as a Christian, let's be sincere and let's keep working at it. Are you working at it? 
I, I, I want to attain greater heights. I want to be more godly. And I'm working on it. It's in the rough and tumble of life, isn't it? But God's grace empowers us as we say, yes, God, I will serve you. And we receive that energizing power. It is just like when you throw a light switch and all of a sudden, what's going to happen when I hit this switch? What's going to happen? Bam! The power flow. You see that? Did you get that? The energy flows through and it lights up. That's what God wants to do in our life to empower us to, to do his work, that energizing power. Also, it's mentioned in this verse, uh, as we go back to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 3 says, Grace to you. Are you thankful that God's been so good to you to save you, to keep you, to use you, to give you wisdom? Grace to you, thank you, Lord, and peace from God, our Father. God, our Father. Have there been times in your life when somebody was there to rescue you in a time of need or to help you out? Do you remember those times? I remember a couple times my dad literally, uh, well, I don't know if anybody else would have saved my life, but my dad was right there, and he saved my life. I was going under the water. And I don't know if I could have crawled, walked out on the bottom or not, what would have happened. But uh, Dad was there, and he took care of the situation. And a couple times, boy, am I glad, right? You remember any times that somebody took care of you? I'll tell you, you have a Father in heaven. And because we have a Father in heaven today, we can have peace. What are you carrying? What's your care? Oh, you don't have any? Good. Enjoy it while it lasts. Sorry, right? But the burdens that we bear and the challenges that we face, we can have peace. Why? Because we're walking with the Father. We're trusting the Father. Because the Father's watching out for you and for me. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the Lord and our God. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Verse 4 says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. You see, grace is mentioned again. Grace, and I thank God. Are you thanking God for grace? Or do you take God for granted? Do you take your meals for granted? Do you take your health for granted? Do you take your job for granted? Do you take your family for granted? Don't you be taking your spouse for granted. Don't you be taking your kids for granted. Don't you be taking, right? Don't you be taking those things for granted. Don't you be taking your parents for granted. Be thankful. Because God gives us peace and purpose and he energizes us. God enables our testimony then. God is at work in our life to enable us. Let's look at verse um, 5. That you were enriched in everything by him. Do you see that? You were enriched. Are you poor or rich today? I don't care if you got 50 bazillion dollars. It doesn't matter. Are you rich with God? Because there's no U-Hauls behind the hearse. Right? You've heard that before. Bad one, Pastor, right? There's no U-Hauls behind the hearse. hearse. You can't take it in your casket. You know what? When we lay up our treasure in heaven, moths and rust are not going to corrupt and thieves aren't going to break through and steal. It says right here in verse 5 that you were enriched. Now, why should, it says, I give thanks to God always. And why should we give thanks? You were enriched in everything by him. Everything that matters, God is taking care of. The most important things and the things that we can't do. We can't save ourselves. We can't lay up our, uh, we can't get to heaven. We can't lay up the treasures in heaven by ourselves. But God's doing that for us. And he is blessing us here and helping us in this life. He is gracing us. He is giving us peace as we look to him as our Father and Savior. And then he uses this as we go on. That you are enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge. The word utterance there speaks of our speech, our utterance, the things that we're saying. God's going to enable us in our testimony as we walk by grace and in peace. You're going to be different in your family. You're going to be different in your community and in the workplace. When you have peace and you are walking with God by his grace with a thankful heart, you're going to be a help to people. 
You're going to be a light and a testimony to those who need to be saved. You're going to be a blessing to your children and your grandchildren as you walk in the grace and in that fatherly peace relationship that you have with God. In all utterance and all knowledge, verse 6, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Do you have a testimony of Christ? Oh, we have a testimony, but what is it? That we're a rebel? That we're mean? That we're lazy? That we, we're, we get out of shirk work if we can? That we clock out early? That we're selfish? What's our testimony? What do people think of us? Or are we walking with God, worshiping he who is worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of honor and glory? He is worthy of thanks. And as we walk with him, we are energized by his grace and by the peace that he gives that we are empowered to be a testimony even though we're having the worst day of our life. We have been mistreated. There are injustices. People are unkind, and we are sacrificing for it, and it is not right. But guess what? We are walking with God. We are enriched in all things. We have the grace of God. We have the peace of God. And we are going to do the right thing because we are, as it were, Christian soldiers, and we have the armor of God on, and we are living for Him. Isn't that right, Christian? And we will rise up, and we will live today for Him because today isn't going to last forever. One day we will be in heaven for eternity. Our life is not even hardly a blip on the timeline. So will we not be faithful and draw upon the grace of God that energizes us in our walk with Him? Notice also that grace enables our gifts. It enables our gifts. Not only our testimony is mentioned here, but verse 7, so that you come short in no gift. You come short in no gift in that testimony that we're having, in that grace of God, in the gifts that uh, he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, the various gifts in the body of Christ, the gift of helps in the ministry that we have to each other, whatever it is, whether it's here in service time or whether it's uh, around the facilities or if it's in the ministries that are around our communities or whether it's financially through sustaining the work or, or uh, uh, supporting missionaries in Kenya or wherever it is, we are a part of that. And God enables us to do that so that you come short in no gift. What's your gift? What are you doing for God? Are you in the spiritual recliner, eating the snacks of the good things of the Christian life and you get to heaven not going to have anything to show for it? Or, or are you like uh, really applying what, what open doors God has set before you? Are you saying, God, I will serve you. I'll, I'll do what needs to be done. I'll, I'll step in. Um, I'll ask the pastor and see what could be done. How can I serve him? I'll, I'll ask and see um, what I can do on a committee or, or uh, how I can get involved in his work. Where are you at with that? The Corinthian church, with all the troubles that they had, they didn't come short, it says, in no gift. And, and God will raise up workers in, in any and every church, our church. Uh, be, be praying about it. Um, nominations for deacon forms are coming out uh, first of the year. Uh, maybe God would have for you to, to uh, step into some of these areas and uh, uh, be all that he would have for you to be so that you come short in no gift. We could use some deacons around here. How many? Well, let's start with one. Let's start with you. Let's start with two. Let's start with three. See what God would have. The gifts. Uh, how about junior church teaching? Thank God for many that step up and teach in junior church that are, are in there. Those that teach in Pats, those that teach in youth group, those that teach in Sunday school. Praise the Lord. What can you do? I, I, I drop in the church at different times. I stop by here, and I catch people in the act. Yesterday, I snuck up on somebody running the vacuum cleaner. No, I didn't. I came in the door, and they didn't hear me, but then they saw me, and I, was, I just waved and uh, talked to them after. Vacuuming. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought that Rusty would have been up vacuuming in the Ed Wing yesterday afternoon, right? People come in here, and they do things, and they're working. Um, what do we got up here? Are these things real? Anyhow, I thought they were real until I noticed that they weren't, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to break that. Oh, this is real, 
right? Some of these are, right? But God, does, God uses people in different ways. And um, I noticed that uh, one of the um, books for, uh, you know, the three different versions out on the table to give to Amish people, uh, one of those was, was, was gone. So one of you took one of those. So we're doing the work in different ways. Doing the work. But God enables by his grace for the gifts. We say, God, thank you. It was my privilege to serve you. Oh, one day we're going to kneel in heaven. And uh, I don't know, this it talks about those that fall before him and cast their crowns and, and the, 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 uh, all that's going on there. Are you going to have anything to, to say, God, you, you used me here, and I praise you for it. Down back there in life on earth, God, your grace was mighty upon me. God, look what you've accomplished. You know the song, Thank You for Giving to the Lord? I was a life that was changed. And uh, the people as they come, when you arrive in heaven, will there be anybody approach you and say that you made any difference in their life? How many? It's by the grace of God that we serve, Right? It's not because we're superheroes or the pastor. He's the only one. No. Just a greater responsibility here and accountability. Right? We're, we're all in it together. And so God enables gifts to serve him. Notice also we have an established future with God. Let me read verse 6 again and 7. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Woo, eagerly waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ. We have an established future with God. Will you say thank you, God, this morning for that? God, I thank you that I have an established future. That's what I'm calling it. We're waiting for the revelation. Is that iffy? Maybe the Lord's coming back, or, or maybe I'll go in the rapture. Well, if you're saved, you're going. If you're not saved, you're not going. Okay? So you need to know Jesus as our Savior. It says, uh, waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, because the day's coming when we're going to be caught up. You see, uh, God began a good work in us, and he will finish it. What he's began, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8, who will also confirm you to the end. You see, there's that grace again. He is keeping us unto the end, and when we get to the end, whether it's by death or the rapture, the catching up, we're going to be with the Lord. Are you ready? Are you, are you living for that? That's all that matters in life, being ready for that moment. And Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to finish what he started in you, and you can be confident of that. Whew. Thank you, Lord. You know what? I wonder what God thinks of us sometimes. He's so good to us, and then we're the way we are. Nobody knows what I'm talking about, right? I'll talk for myself. The thoughts we think, the attitudes that pop up, the things we look at, the priorities we keep or don't keep, the endeavors we are planning to do and then fail. Right? But God's so good to us. But he's begun a good work in us, and praise God, we're not what we used to be, right? And we're not what we yet want to be, but let's give thanks for right now where we are and that we are moving forward. Maybe it's two steps forward and one back sometimes, but that's okay. Maybe it's not okay, but that's the reality of it. At least we're moving forward. And let's take three steps forward and maybe struggle and fall back one step. But guess what? Let's keep moving forward. He's begun a good work in you, and we say, thank you, Lord, that you just don't throw me in the trash and find somebody else. We say, thank you, Lord. You're so good. Thank you. God is coming to take us home. Um, uh, let's continue reading in verse 7. So that... You come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord speaks of our master. Jesus speaks of Savior. Christ sp speaks of uh, the mediator, our great high priest, the Messiah. And then verse 8. Who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? You see, he's taken us home. In that day, we'll be blameless. 
He's going to take us. He's going to finish the sanctification process. Positionally, when we were born again, practically in our life, we're, we're to be advancing. But when we arrive in heaven, not only will we be saved soul and spirit, but also our flesh, the body. The old man will be put off. John 14, 2 and 3, he goes to prepare a place for us. When he goes and prepares a place for us, it means he's preparing it, right? He's going to come again and receive us to himself that where Jesus says, where I am, there you may be also. Are you ready for heaven? Are you living for heaven? Thank God he's preparing you a place. Do you like construction? Are you building anything? You need any repairs done before winter? Put it on the list out there. We'll see what we can do, right? Um, but God's preparing us a place. What's it like in heaven? God is coming to take us home. God is faithfully working out a plan now. God is faithfully working out a plan now. Verse 9. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, he's working out a plan now. He's faithful to work out this plan, these reasons for which we have to be thankful. He's working it out. And also God is calling us to the, uh, the fellowship of his son. He wants you to be in fellowship with him. He wants you to walk with him. God's faithful to do his part, but are we faithful to do our part? Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Who's that written to? We like to talk about unbelievers, that, that if though, you know, God's knocking at the door of your heart and waiting to save you, that's true, yes, in that sense. Whoever will open the door of their life and say, Lord, save me, he'll save God's, God's knocking at the door of your life to save you if you're not saved. He's, he's, he's affirming these things, and he's, he's calling you. But you know who that's written to? That's written to the seven churches. That's, that's in Revelations 2 and 3, right? Are you opening the door so, of fellowship with him by being in the word and in prayer? Are you walking with him while you're driving? Are you talking with him? Are you recognizing his presence and what a thanks list will do will help you be mindful of his presence. And it will lift us out of that discouragement and depression and worry and cares. It will move us to God is bigger than this. God is faithful by whom I've been called. I'm not lacking in, it, in any grace or gifts. I have the peace of God. Come what may. And it's going to come, but that's okay. Amen, Christians? It's not going to get any better, maybe. But that's all right. It's going to get better in the end. Three score and ten, right? Whatever. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be with the Lord. So the fellowship of his son. So let me ask you today, will you gratefully recognize God's grace that saved you? Will you show gratitude for the peace that he's given? Will you know the, the, the privilege and thank him for the, the, the grace that you can serve him? Will you thank him for his faithfulness? And, and then as it goes into verse 10, it talks about joining together in unity. Because we're all thanking God and moving in a direction that we're not fussing down here like kids fighting in the back seat of the car, right? No, we're looking at heaven and we're living for Him. And we're walking together in unity. I thank my God always, Paul says. And he says that maybe he would say to us today, give us a good slap on the back and say, will you? Will you thank God always where you're at? We're getting ready for Thanksgiving. We're going to continue in this passage, Lord willing, uh, next Sunday if the Lord doesn't come back first and uh, talk more about thanks. Lord, we thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, as we search our hearts because you have given us an exalted position in Christ. You have called us. You have saved us. You've added us to the body of Christ, the church, the bride of Christ. You've saved us from sin and you've been working in us to sanctify us and, and uh, make us a holy bride, a saint. We're a saint positionally. Help us to live that out. Lord, you've an, an energized us with your power by the Holy Spirit and by your grace. You've given us a future home in heaven, and we have so much for which to give thanks. Lord, as we move into Thanksgiving here, just about a week and a half, a little more, help us to be full of true 
thanksgiving. Because your word says, in everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So Lord, thank you that you've got it all taken care of. And even though we stumble through life, we're, you're holding our hand and we're not going to fall down. Because you have us and you're going to help us. And you love us and you're joyfully involved in our life. So we thank you, Lord, for that. So we continue as believers in prayer. Maybe you're here today and say, Pastor, I'm not sure if I'm saved. I want to be right with you. Would, you. would you talk with me about being ready to meet you? Anybody just pop your hand up and say, I want to, I want to know the Lord. Anybody? I want to know more of what you're talking about. Lord, thank you for what you're doing. Continue to call to our hearts that we would make that decision, as I did when I was 17, to call upon you to be our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you grab your hymnal and stand with me? 786.